everyone, it's Lisa from I Dream In Soap. Welcome to my channel. Now I've got a fun soap today and I've been really looking forward to doing this one. At the start of the year I, I plan all of my soaps out and what I'm going to make and ideas and that sort of thing. And one of the things I did is I gave Paul, Mr I Dream In Soap, a little challenge. I said I wanted him to think about some sort of unusual ingredient that we could use in soap. Now Paul's not a soap maker so obviously I gave him a little bit of guidance of the sort of things that would be good to use and also as well he's kind of aware of some of the normal things that people put in you know like coffee and beer and honey and milk and all of that sort of stuff so we wanted something a little bit unusual. So what Paul came up with is he said breakfast things. Paul likes toast and jam and toast and marmalade and toast and all that sort of stuff. He doesn't like honey though <laughs> for his breakfast. So I thought that would be a really good thing to do because you don't often see people doing this with soap and it's something that would work really well. So what we've got with ingredients, I'm going to do a layered soap. So first of all I've got here, I've got some peanut butter. So we're going to do peanut butter in a couple of our layers. Now the peanut butter should be great because this is literally a 100% peanut peanut butter so it is literally just blended up peanuts and peanuts have a lot of oils in them so that will work well in the soap. I've got some jam now I know typically in the US I don't know about you guys in Canada are you mad on peanut butter and jelly? It, it's not such a big thing over here and we don't get jelly as such. We have jam which I think is basically the same sort of thing and we don't really get grape jellies especially. So I've just got some nice strawberry jam here because that's the sort of thing we can get. Strawberry jam here, I've made sure I've got one that's a seedless jam so it's all nice and smooth. Now the reason I wanted seedless because you might think well wouldn't the little seeds or the little pips be good for exfoliation? You need to be careful when putting botanicals in your soap. If you put in things like poppy seeds, um, that sort of thing, typically these are dried and those would then be safe to put into your soap because they're not going to have any water in them, therefore they're not going to mould. If, for example, you used a jam, <laughs> oh, look at my glove, I'll change that in a minute. If, for example, you used a jam and the jam had like fresh raspberry seeds or fresh strawberry seeds, so strawberry like the little pippy bits they get on the outside, because those aren't dried, you would have a chance that those would then cause some moulding in your soap. So I've gone seedless. Other breakfast thing I've got here, lime marmalade. Lime marmalade is our favourite marmalade. We like Seville Orange as well but we like a lime marmalade. So again lime marmalade and again I've gone for one that's shredless so it's literally just the marmalade. Now both of these really what you're using them for it's like when people put fruits in their soap and certain vegetables and things is this is going to boost up the sugar content. So adding more sugar to your soap is going to make it hopefully more bubbly. So those of those bits and then this last little pot here down along the breakfast theme still this is a little pot of colloidal oats so oatmeal for breakfast that's quite breakfasty too so those are my unusual ingredients admittedly colloidal oats not unusual but hey I wanted to bung it in anyway now I'm sure many of you know I'm based in the UK if you don't know um, I'm based in the UK by the way and we have very tight regulations about what we can do with our soap and every time we produce a soap we can only sell it if we submit it for a cosmetic product safety assessment and that costs quite a bit of money. Now this is going to be a one-off soap. This is not something I'm going to be selling in the shop, it's not some, this is just for fun. This is something I'm not going to be selling so I'm not going to get a safety assessment done on it. Um, it doesn't mean it's going to be an unsafe soap, it just means I haven't put it through the formal testing to allow me to sell it. It's not going to be in the shop, it's just going to be fun, it's going to be something for me and Paul to use and perhaps give to a couple of family members as well. I thought about going natural with the soap but then I, again I thought, do you know what, I'm just going to do this as a fun soap. So I am going to be using some micas in it. For my lime marmalade, I know that's a yellowy colour 
but I'm going to use a lime mica in here. This is lime from Pure Rock Colours. For my peanut butter, I'm using Golden Shimmer from Mica Mama. For my jam, I'm using this Mica Mama Sample Red. I'm not, not really sure what it is. You know, it's, it's obviously a safe mica. Mica Mama sent me a whole bunch of reds, uh, which I tested in another video just before Christmas. I don't have an assessment with this red in, so therefore this is a good chance for me to use some of this up in a soap that I'm not going to be selling. So that would be great. I can get that and use some of that. And then colloidal oats, I'm going to pop in just a little bit of titanium dioxide. <laughs> Nearly there. Fragrance. Paul chose the fragrance. I gave him a... I, I did sort of narrow down a selection of some fragrances, which I thought would be sort of appropriate. And he picked up on Horchata Rum from Stock Fragrance. You know, again, I thought about doing the essential oil thing, and then I thought, no, this is just a fun soap for Paul and I to use. So Horchata Rum, he had a good sniff through some soaps, um and he picked, sorry, some scents, and he picked this. This is great, this is a, it does have sort of a breakfasty sort of feel to it. It's sort of a bit creamy, a little bit of a rummy taste. I know you probably don't have rum for breakfast, but it's it's got more of a, it lends more towards sort of like a foody type smell than some of the other fragrances I've got. So we're gonna be using that in our soap. Right, Whew. so there's all our stuff. I've taken the micas that I'm going to use and I've popped them into some little jugs just so I can prepare all the layers at the same time and then I'm just going to divide up my oils. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a layer of peanut butter on the bottom and then I'm going to have a layer of jam, a layer of lime marmalade and then another layer of peanut butter on the top but in the middle of those layers I'm going to have the colloidal oats white layer just to separate them out. So I've worked out how much I need for each layer. So I'm just gonna get these colors mixed in. So I'm just going to go in and just blend a bit of mica first. Now you could just add, I'm essentially just adding these to my oils. Now you could just put them in the oils and blend them in. It's just I'd already pop them in the bottom of my jugs because I would normally disperse in a small amount of oil. And I just didn't want to get them stuck to the bottom. So I'm just giving them a little bit of a blend through there. And then I can just pour the oil for each layer in. So I've got all those colours all mixed in and added the additives into each of these. So this has got my lime marmalade in it, this has got my strawberry jam in it, this has got my colloidal oats and I've got my peanut butter over there. I did those at a rate of 12% for those additives. Now I wasn't sure about the additives, you know, there's no hard and fast rule of what to use. There was a soap challenge quite a few years ago where they did food ingredients and the recommendation was to use 8%. Now I've gone up to 12 a little bit just because my food ingredients are not really sort of fresh food. It's not like carrots or avocado or things like that. Mine are sort of like the jams and the jelly. So I've gone up a little bit more. Plus, in addition to that, it's only a soap for personal use. The only one I did less of was the colloidal oats where I did 5%. And I'm now, with the oils, just gonna give each one a blend so I can make sure that those additives are really well dispersed. I did heat the additives up a little bit. So for example, with my peanut butter, butter, that was really quite stiff. So by just adding some heat to it, it just made it a little bit looser. So this is the peanut butter in here as well with this golden shimmer. And this one, I'm just making sure that all these things are really well dispersed because I don't want a whole lump of peanut butter somewhere in my soap peanut butter too. I can feel that peanut butter on the bottom there. Right, so I'm happy 
that that is now all of my additives nicely dispersed I've got no little bits or speckles so I can start making this into the soap now certainly you could add some exfoliants into something like this but I must admit neither Paul nor I are awfully keen on <laughs> soaps with exfoliants in just for general use we prefer a nice smooth gentle bubbly creamy soap let's get this first layer made then so peanut butter to start with and <laughs> it does smell really good right so I've got peanut butter in here and my oils and my mica this is my lye and sodium lactate now I haven't changed my lye or adjusted it for anything technically the peanuts will have extra oil in them I've got nothing to measure the amount of oil and calculate that in so that's just gonna be extra super fat and I said that's fine okay so that's everything in there together apart from my fragrance I haven't done that yet let's get that blended okay I can see that's starting to thicken so I don't want to be a little bit careful that I'm gonna be able to pour that into the mold so let's add the fragrance in this is that horchata rum from stock fragrance Good okay so it's definitely coming to a nice sort of light trace there that peanut butter's not really giving me any grief it came to a trace quite nicely but it's not moving my trace too much or being problematic I think that's going to be cool oh <laughs> gosh what a tricky one it smells gorgeous and it looks nice as well it's making me really hungry don't eat the soap especially not the soap at this stage right <laughs> make peanut butter soap oh, it smells mind you that is the fragrance oh, all right so there's that layer just gonna like normal leave that to set up whilst that's setting up starting it is starting to set now I'm going to work on these colloidal oats. Now I need to divide this into three because I'm using it in three layers. Okay, so as I've put all of my oils for three layers and my colloidal oats in here and obviously my titanium dioxide, I'm going to have to weigh this and divide it by three to make sure I get the right amount poured out. Now I know the weight of my jug. So I can just... Okay, so 335 minus 78, divide that by 3, so I want to pour off 85.6 grams. Okay, so that will be for each layer. Now that's a very small amount, so I am just going to do it in a little pot. Okay, give it a good stir, making sure I've got all of those bits mixed together. And that's really really important when you're doing something like this because what I don't want is I don't want those oats to settle a couple of reasons if they settle they won't be nicely dispersed through the soap but what would be more problematic is if they settled then you'd have different weights of oil being poured into each portion you want to divide this evenly so you don't end up with one bit being lie heavy and one bit having too much of a super fat so I'm going to get this poured out okay and then what we again is remember that 85.6 is my total in there i had originally planned to put 80 grams of oil in this so this will be 80 grams of oil and then the rest of that will be a combination of titanium dioxide and colloidaloids colloidaloids <laughs> you know what i mean right so i'm going to measure out my lie for the 80 grams of oil that's in that concoction let's do our first colloidal oat layer then so there's my colloidal oat mixture my tiny bit of lye solution and sodium lactate it's only a very small amount so I'm using my little mini mixer ok 
Okay, let's bring our mould back and we'll get this first colloidal oat layer in. Now this layer is going to be thinner than the others, they're not all equal size. These layers, the white ones are one third the size of the other colours. But I'm going to have three of these. Let's spread out. So there we are with that one. <laughs> this is a real fun soap to make. Okay, so again, I'm going to leave that to set up. And as it starts to get set, I'm going to start doing my next layer, which is going to be my jam layer, strawberry jam. Life is a winding road, no telling where it goes. Driving through days and nights, won't stop for traffic lights. look really good down the sides I'm now just going to cover that I mean, as I said I'm not doing any swirls or anything on the top I like it just nice and flat like that let's get that covered now there's a lot of sugars in here so I may not just may not see pop this um, because of all the sugars in there I'm likely just to put something over it and then just keep an eye on it just to make sure it doesn't get too hot and start to crack as I said there's quite a lot of extra additives in there which could cause it to overheat and could cause some cracking here we are with our breakfast soap the next day and it's looking pretty good so remember this was the peanut butter top and bottom then there was the strawberry jam and then there was the lime marmalade now one thing with this is this lime, lime marmalade layer looks a little dull I can't remember this is the first time I've actually used the horchata rum in a soap I didn't think it discoloured so I was surprised to see that lime dull down it may be that it does discolour what we'll do is as we cut this we'll be able to tell whether that lime is duller because of the discolouring and normally what will happen is if you see that we'll see a border towards the outside if it's the same all the way through it's likely to be just because of maybe the interaction with the lime marmalade the extra sugars you know something maybe slightly different to that so let's get this cut and see what we can see Uh -huh. So we can see that limey colour is the same all the way through. So that has actually dulled that down. I think we'll have to do another test on the frame which all, but for me here, seeing the fact that that's a consistent colour all the way through would imply to me that it's probably not a coloration thing from the fragrance oil. It's probably more to do with the ingredients in the soap because that lime normally comes out really vibrant green. That's really cool. Does smell, does smell really lovely. As you can see there, I'm really pleased with that. That has come out, it does look cute. I do like the look of that. Just lay a couple out here. Now what I am gonna do, um, I haven't got this soap scheduled to go live on YouTube for a good few weeks yet. So I'm hoping to get this cured properly and then do a lava test and see what it feels like with especially these peanut butter layers I'm really intrigued about those to see if that adds any properties or if it makes the soap feel any different so should see that at the end of this video our soap's four weeks old now so here's just an end slice I'm just going to give it a lava test and see what we think. Now I'm not expecting it to be too massively different because it's basically my same recipe it's just got a lot of extra sugars in because of remember we had the lime marmalade and the strawberry or raspberry jam I can't remember what it was now and then this was the peanut butter okay, so... <laughs> okay well it's certainly bubbling really well look at that we've got some nice little sort of bubbles 
in there. Let's just put that down. It does feel lovely, lovely and smooth, lovely and creamy. I do think it maybe feels a tiny bit creamier than my normal recipe. Certainly does feel nice. And yes, lovely and bubbly. As you can see, those bubbles are working up really quickly without me having to get loads and loads of soap off. I think the bubbles are a little bubblier rather than creamier. But yes, it's definitely <laughs> it does feel really nice. And I'm really pleased with it. It's a really nice soap to use. I, I don't think it's massively different to my existing recipe, but as I said, that's because the only thing that's different to it is the additives that's put into it. But you know, this is pretty well how my normal soap recipe lathers, but it does feel really good. Now, unfortunately, because of our rules and regulations here in the UK, this is not something I can put in the shop because I don't have an assessment for a soap made with jams and peanut butter in it so unfortunately if you are looking for it it's not actually going to be into the shop oh I'm just doing that bottom bit that bottom bit there that's the peanut butter and it was a smooth peanut butter but there is a a little bit of exfoliation in there not not a real grating bit if, if you're someone that doesn't really like exfoliation it's quite nice it's just got a tiny feel on it so you can feel it, but not really scratchy. Okay, so that was just a nice fun soap to make. And then I'll just leave you with a final photo of the soap. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you like the soap. If you have, it'd be great if you gave me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see what I'm making in the future, why not subscribe to my channel? Thanks for watching everyone. Happy soaping.